Musical comedies come and go, but there's one that holds a special place in the affections of our musical comedy audience. Perhaps it was the personality of the artist who first performed it in this country in 1910. Blanche Brown, Bertie Wright, Claude Bantock, Leslie Holland, not forgetting the idol of Australian theatre goers, Andrew Higginson. Then those two popular inseparables who revived it here in 1933, Madge Elliott and Cyril Richard, or perhaps its melodies, some of the catchiest ever heard in musical comedy. But our audience is getting restless, so overture please to Lionel Monkton and Ivan Carroll's captivating Our Miss Gibbs. <laughs> When the curtain goes up on Act One, we see the vestibule and general entrance to London's leading emporium, Garrods. Lady customers lavishly gowned are busily shopping, and the scene is one of colour and bustling activity, most of which revolves around that very famous sales assistant, our Miss Gibbs. Mary Gibbs has a large personal following at Garrods, but the man who follows her most ardently is young Lord Ainsford. He is looking for her now. And, a thing you don't often see, he stands up in the middle of the bargain counter and bursts into a song of love about this Yorkshire lass. There's a girl at the stalls called Mary. She's dainty and rather demure. I come every day, I can't keep away. There's nobody like her, I'm sure. She hasn't long been in London. She's simple and yet she's smart. And though in the Brett her name isn't met, there's no other name in my heart. She's just a lass from Yorkshire, a little country maiden, with eyes of blue that all day through are locked and laden. Until the day I met her, my heart was fancy free. But oh, my little Yorkshire lassie, you are the girl for me. Whenever I speak to Mary, although she is humble and poor, a voice seems to bring a breath of the spring away from the edge of the moor. Her smile is a ray of sunshine, and no one can quite understand how dearly I prize one glance from her eyes or the touch of her dear little hand. She's just a lass from your chair. A simple country maiden With eyes of blue that all day through are locked a laden Until the day I met her My heart was fancy free But oh my little Yorkshire lassie You are the girl for me Normally the singing of a song would have a rather unnerving effect on the customers But the conventions of musical comedy are nothing if not elastic and caught up in the spirit of the thing, Madame Jeanie, the Scotch lassie from the Rue de la Paix, who is showing the latest creations to the bridesmaids of Lady Betty Thanet, incidentally the fiancé of Lord Ainsford, decides to do her selling to music, and the audience is now treated to her lively dissertation on hats. <laughs> People say success is won by dresses, fancy that. But what are dresses without a hat? If you would set men talking when you're walking out to shop, you'll be all right if you're right on top. A buzz be made of fur is sure to cause a stir. And here is one we've got, you'll find it very hot. You have to push it down to there, it doesn't matter then, if you have no hair. That's the lost Parisian hat, so buy it and try it. Keep your head up, stay near state, though you're fainting under the weight. Women say you look like a cat, their chatter won't matter. All the boys that you meet will declare you're sweet. Men will wait outside on the mat. 
that if you have, that hurts. Women say you look like a cat, their chatter will better. They are waiting to see who on earth you can be. Men are waiting outside on the net. Neither Lady Betty nor her fiancé, Lord Ainsford, is enthusiastic about the match. It was arranged by Betty's mother, the Duchess of Minster, and my lord's father, the Earl of St. Ives, presumably with the connivance of the Archbishop of Canterbury. It is all very aristocratic, and the programme re reads like a page out of Burke's Peerage. It was not until the 1940s that love on the dole became fashionable. However, Lady Betty is in love with the Honourable Huey Pierpong, an amateur criminal, and it is her turn now to sing of romance. Oh, I am not so unwilling, someone rather nice to wed, yet it is... whisper runs around the house for now this is the entrance of the star herself our Miss Gibbs. Mary has been transferred to the flower department and it is only fitting that she should make her entrance waving a bunch of heather they call her pretty Mary she sighs but her name is really Miss Gibbs I'm a 
little Yorkshire lass up in town at present, and I fancy in my glass I look most unpleasant. But it bothers me to see silly people waiting, saying they're in love with me. I'm so fascinating when I'm nothing of the sort. Yes, no, I'm nothing of the sort. Yes, Miss Gibbs, here's that irrepressible the Honorable Huey Pierpong again. To further his career in crime, Huey makes an attempt, unsuccessful, to steal Mary's brooch, and then tries to steal her heart, still unsuccessfully. But it's only half-hearted burglary, for Huey really loves Lady Betty, and Mary, Lord Ainsford. Just the same, it's an excellent excuse for a little light-hearted song and dance. <laughs> I'm really 
realized my love for you once all but inspired. I've seen a diamond bracelet that I almost acquired. And if I saw you in the church arrayed all in white, I'd pretty nearly mumble out, I will, but, but quite. If you were just the sort of girl that I could adore, if you had only got the modest million or more, then my next Saturday upon your father would call. But as it is, I don't intend to do so at all. If I were just the sort of girl that he could adore, if I had only got a modest million or more, then he next Saturday upon my father would call. But as it is, I don't intend to do so at all. By various means, all the characters plan to be present that night at the White City, scene of the Franco-British exhibition. Mary, Lord Ainsford, Mary's cousin, Tim Gibbs, Lady Betty, and her amateur crook, Huey. But Betty's mother, the Duchess, threatens to spoil all the fun. A woman of great strength of character. She locks up her child in the bathroom and hides her clothes. And what does Betty do? Hangs out the window and screams, Fire! which brings a fireman with a ladder smartly to the rescue. And next thing, Betty shows up at the White City in a schoolgirl's uniform. With what a tale to tell about the thrill of being rescued in the arms of a big, strong fireman. I am sure your education is not complete at present, girls. Till you've met with one sensation that's really rather pleasant, girls. A man who's young and handsome To grasp you tightly Yet most politely For you feel A sort of misty charm When you're encircled By a manly arm It's wrong and nice And my advice And try it once or twice Arms and the man Arms and the man The stage is now set for a lover's quarrel between Mary and Lord Ainsford. Up to the present time, the lovesick peer has concealed his identity from Mary and tells her that he is a bank clerk. But it's hard to keep a secret in a musical comedy. And when Mary learns the truth that her boyfriend is the son and heir of the Earl of St. Ives and rich as Croesus, she tells him that she never wants to see him again which is rather eccentric of her, but possibly she's been reading the works of Karl Marx. So she consoles herself with the company of her cousin Tim and memories of that little farm of theirs in Yorkshire. I'd like to take 
tell you all about the farm we call our home. It's nice to have a home, you must confess. The aspect's simply perfect and the soil's a lovely loam. It measures half an acre more or less. Then we thought a little paddock quite conveniently near. So of course that paddock isn't very wide. When the donkey rubs his nose against the railing over here, well, his tail is swishing round the other side. It's, It's a nice little farm, and you won't do any harm if you come along and look at it one day. And I'm open to a bet, if next summer isn't wet, we shall gather quite a basket full of hay. Though the place isn't big, We've a piggy wiggy wee and a garden with a lot of pretty flowers. And we've got a giddy goose who is always on the loose. Oh, oh you love a little cow like us. We've started in a quiet way a little poultry run. Our birds are really strong upon the leg. And on Tuesday in the summer time we have a lot of fun in hunting round the farm to find the egg. Then we bought a champion rooster guaranteed to make a noise just to wake us in the mornings now and then. But he proved a disappointment for he thought he'd lost his voice till we found he was a cost and china hen. <laughs> oh, chop his head off. It's a nice little farm, and you won't do any harm if you come and have a tumble in the hay. We bid cow your word applaud, and we always call her Maud, cause she comes into the garden every day. We bid spade and a hoe, and some turnips in a row, which are doing very nicely in the show. And we now intend to keep Just a half a brace of sheep. <laughs> oh, you don't forget the farm like Every great power, it seems, is represented at the exhibition, and in honor of the ambassadors, the Earl of St. Ives stages a spectacular moon fete. All that remains now is for Mary and Ainsford to kiss and make up, which is done with the assistance of the Earl, a good fairy if ever there was one. Believing that his son is quite serious about little Miss Gibbs, he gives the young couple his blessing. That leaves Lady Betty free to marry the Honourable Huey. But Mary, not very much time to change into her fetching period costume for the finale and Moonstruck. <laughs> Time to wink, 
that is it right, you know. Every day I'll be as good as gold, doing everything at all I'm doing. But as soon as the sun's in bed, well, it's dead. I've such a flighty little, foolish little head. I'm such a silly when the moon comes out. I hardly seem to know what I'm about. Skipping, hopping, never, never stopping. I can't keep still, although I try. I'm all the quicker when the moon beams glance. That is the moment when I long to dance. I can never close my sleepy eye when the moon comes creeping up the sky. ends well and Mary and her sprig of nobility decide they are suitable for the marriage stakes and that puts everybody in a happy frame of mind for the musical finale which is the inevitable ending to our Miss Gibbs and all romantic musical comedies. the show is over. Here and there, some devotees, hemmed by the crowd streaming out to the foyer, whistle soft fragments of the captivating Lionel Moncton melodies. And so, happily home they go, from the musical comedy theatre. <laughs>